Um, so today uh, the topic will be focus. So I, I thought I'll start maybe with, uh, I'll, I'll go back and do a little recap. Um, and, and also for those of you who weren't here last time, for example. So um, um, in this course, we're doing, we're doing two things. And uh, the first thing is that we're um, cultivating mindfulness. And mindfulness, we've simply defined that as, as the ability to focus clearly uh, on a task or an object or a, a mental phenomenon, basically anything, but keeping our focus uh, firmly and clearly on whatever we choose and, and not getting distracted. So then the, the first three sessions, and this is session two, we've been looking at um, mainly working with three um, challenges that, that we come across as soon as we start doing this type of, type of practice and this type of meditation. And, and those challenges are, the first one is trying too hard and pushing too hard. So when we try to focus, we tend to clamp down and get all um, stressed out and tensed. And the second uh, challenge is that we get uh, distracted. So we have thoughts that go all over the place and not a very steady mind. And the third challenge is, is dullness and laxity. And uh, we, we just get, sometimes we get uh, spaced out and, and, and maybe we fall asleep. So, so the first three sessions have, are about countering these challenges. And the first one last week was uh, all about relaxation. So cultivating relaxation as a foundation for a stable focus instead of doing what we usually do and, you know, try to really tense up and clamp down whenever we want to be focused. And then today we'll talk more about um, the aspect of focus itself or stability, we can call it, which will then counteract this uh, distraction and, and it's sometimes called monkey mind, uh, the mind that goes all over the place. And then next week we'll uh, address um, the mental you know, quality of clarity. So having a really high definition, clear awareness to counter this dullness or laxity or um, sloth. Uh, and then session four and five will also be about focus or what's in Buddhist terms called shamatha meditation. But in session four, we'll turn our attention to our own minds. So um, for the first three sessions, we'll be using the breath as an object of focus. And then session four, we'll turn to the mind and start just uh, using all the things that appear in our minds, thoughts, sensations, feelings, memories, all of that as, a, as an uh, object to focus on. And the benefit of that is that um, we have a situation, most of us, I, I certainly know I do, a situation where we're sometimes enslaved by our own minds. We're tormented by our own minds. Worries and fears and anxieties and too much uh, agitation. So this kind of practice really helps us to become masters of our minds and to help uh, not be controlled by whatever, whatever is going on in our mind, but rather take control ourselves and uh, so that the mind becomes um, a tool that we can use instead of something that just uh, tends to enslave us. And then in the fifth session, still shamatha, still focus, but then the object will be awareness itself. So just um, the pure experience of being aware. And we, when we start to look there, we will find that within our experience is always this uh, stillness, this basis of, of calm and, and clarity that is awareness itself. And the benefit of starting to focus in upon that is that we can then start to live our lives from, uh, from, that, um, from that stillness or that uh, clarity, which is um, extremely powerful. Uh, but um, this is still uh, still shamatha practice and still focus practice, but it's immensely helpful when we start to cultivate that ability. 
Uh, and then from there, this is a really good bridge into uh, 6, 7, and 8, which will be about cultivating insight or what's called vipassana practice in Sanskrit or vipassana practice in, in Pali, where we, where we start then to use this ability of mindfulness to really explore the nature of our experience. So in session six, we will look into um, change or impermanence. So today, uh, or in our in the state we're in, we have a lot of times we have this uh, um, sense that that people or people or situations or things have a kind of stability to them, even though we know intellectually that everything changes. We kind of expect things not to change and when they do we suffer so really starting to explore uh, in detail how transient things are that this is the nature of our minds the nature of reality and then we can start to instead of fighting against the flow of life we can start to use that flow to our advantage and really start to see that impermanence is something really really good because it uh, impermanence is uh, what enables us to change. Um, and then in uh, session seven, we will look at, um, it's called it's called dissatisfaction. So we will start to look at in uh, what what the true sources of our suffering is. Some or, or a lot of times we kind of uh, project the cause of our suffering out upon the world, you know. If people treat us badly or we don't get the job we want or um, I don't know, the stock market goes down and then we suffer. But when we start to look in more detail, we see that the suffering actually comes from what's sometimes called mental affliction. So our suffering actually comes from greed or irritation or anger or pride or all these sorts of things. They are actually the true source of of suffering, not uh, the things that are out there. Uh, and we can also then start to discover what is true happiness um, as uh, opposed to um, what you could call pleasure. Pleasure is always impermanent, it comes and goes, but uh, we can start to cultivate a more solid foundation of, of joy and happiness that is not dependent on you know, whatever situation we find ourselves in. And then session eight, we'll, um, we will turn this uh, tool of mindfulness in upon ourselves and we will just ask some questions about what is the nature of self. So we have this um, view that there is some kind of autonomous, separate, static self here somewhere. I don't know where. Usually I would point here, you know, me somewhere here. Uh, and a lot of the trouble that we run into is us trying to protect this me, this self. Uh, but then when you start to look into it, you don't find such an autonomous separate self. You just find interdependence, you find change, you find uh, a constantly flowing process. And so the, that session is called potential because when we start to realize that, we start to unlocking uh, some of our true potential and, and we stop being locked into this narrow view of, of who we are. So that's kind of that's kind of the map of where we are and, and where we're going with this. Um, and then last uh, last week we talked about um, relaxation and we started using um, the breath as an object for our meditation. We used uh, full body awareness with the breath. And, and this is really uh, starting with this really, uh, this sense of, of um, being able to relax both physically and mentally. It is extremely important for any of this. And sometimes that's a step we skip because we're such overachievers, so we just want to, you know, want to be very good at this mindfulness business and then, you know, jump into it. But we need to start with uh, relaxation. It's, it's fundamental. 
And I think I also mentioned this, this metaphor of a, of a tree. So the roots of the tree, this relaxation, and then the trunk of the tree is this, is this session, it's focus or stability. And then the leaves and branches of the tree is the clarity. So with the deep, deep roots of relaxation, we can really get a stable, strong, solid focus. And from that, we can gain more clarity and insight and along the road, more wisdom, because we have this um, foundation that uh, enables us to not be so um, controlled by our minds and thrown this way and that, because you know we're just stable and, and rooted. Um, and also, this is extremely, <clears throat> extremely useful in everyday life. I mean, man, do we tense too much. Uh, and I, I, I think that you all can recognize that there is a lot of tension going on <clears throat> uh, in modern, modern society. So we, we really need to cultivate this ability of, of uh, letting go, relaxing, resting before we do anything else, really. Um, and I thought, <clears throat> before we leave um, relaxation, I actually thought um, uh, I would read from, um, this is from a book called uh, The Attention Revolution, which is uh, written by um, a man uh, named Alan Wallace. And it's well worth checking out in this context of shamatha practice or mindfulness practice but this is uh so this is a section about the importance of, of relaxation in the practice and i'll read uh, a page or two here so this is alan wallace speaking and he says um, thus our practice of mindfulness of breathing consists of prolonging our awareness of our breath while this requires an alert mind such concentration should not be tense but rather balanced. When we discover that we have become distracted from the meditation object, it may feel natural to clamp down more forcefully, tightly concentrating the mind. You can see this in the facial expressions of people who try to concentrate in this way. Their lips become pursed, their eyebrows draw together, and their foreheads become furled with wrinkles. They are becoming concentrated, but like orange juice, most of the fluidity is being drained from their minds. If you want to concentrate for a short time and don't mind the side effects of tension or fatigue, you can follow the above strategy. But if you want to follow the path of shamatha, you will need an alternative. I had to discover this fact through experience. During my first extended shamatha retreat, I was filled with enthusiasm. I wanted to take full advantage of the rare opportunity that was before me, for I was meditating in India under the guidance of the Dalai Lama. I had no financial worries and my materials needs were, material needs were easily met. All I had to do was put the instructions into practice. I threw myself into this training with all my might. Each morning I would rise at 3.30, except once when I slept until 3.45 and got upset with myself for slacking off. Enthusiastic I was, but so uptight. The Tibetan manuals on shamatha meditation that I had studied over the years stated that the type of attention needed when one began such practice was highly focused. So I tried as hard as I could to keep my mind from wandering. Within a matter of a few weeks, devoting many hours each day to meditation, I could sustain my attention on my chosen object for up to a half an hour. I was elated to be making such fast progress. As the weeks went by, however, I found myself becoming more and more fatigued. I was draining myself both physically and mentally. My joy in the practice was diminishing accordingly, and I felt my attention was not developing any further. What was wrong? I was trying too hard. The cultivating, cultivation of shamatha involves balancing the mind, and that includes balancing the effort exerted in the practice with relaxation. I think this points to a cultural difference between traditional Tibetans living in the highlands of Tibet 
and modern people leading fast-paced lives. Their senses constantly bombarded by telephones, email, the media, and noise. Years of such existence condition the nervous system and mind in ways that might have been considered torture uh, in rural Tibet. Uh, one traditional Tibetan doctor whom I know once commented on people living in the West. Uh, from the perspective of Tibetan medicine, uh, you are all suffering from nervous disorders. But given how ill you actually are, you are coping remarkably well. Um, whether we dwell in Boston, Buenos Aires, Berlin or Beijing, our minds are conditioned to be more high-strung and engaged in compulsive thinking than the minds of Tibetan nomads and farmers living a century ago. So when the Tibetan meditation manuals advise beginners to focus their attention firmly, the instructions are aimed at a very different reader than the average city dweller in the 21st century. Before we can develop attentional stability, we first need to learn to relax. Um, yeah, so um, I think we have um, some really unique challenges uh, in our culture when it comes to um, um, to this kind of practice. And I know for myself, and I've, I've met many, many people who um, um, they get um, they get almost put off by this practice because it becomes just another thing that they have to do. It becomes a burden and we're approaching it um, with too much effort, too much striving and not enough ease and relaxation. So um, yeah, I, I hope I've, um, uh, maybe I've overemphasized the point, but it's extremely important. And, and actually I find um, uh, to my surprise, I was almost, uh, uh, I was almost reading this section. I was almost brought to tears because it is, uh, uh, it is insane what we, um, what we're putting ourselves through in modern society. And this is really why we need um, these kind of practices because uh, uh, it's not sustainable for people. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, having said that, we are moving on to focus. <laughs> uh, and in order to focus, uh, we need to, uh, there needs to be some effort. And there's this uh, great simile with, um, uh, with uh, you're trying to play the guitar. So in order for that to sound nice, you, you kind of need to uh, have the string, uh, you have to tense it a little bit because if it's too slack, then you know there's, that's not a nice sound. But if you tense it too much, which we used to do or used to doing, then it kind of just snaps and that doesn't work either. So it's, it's really about finding this balance between uh, exerting some effort in focus, but at the same time remaining balanced and relaxed. And we don't have to worry about exerting too much effort. We most of the time need to worry more about uh, relaxing and, and letting go. So, but um, the, this ability of being able to focus single pointedly on something that's extremely helpful and useful in, in modern society because if, you're, if your life is anything like us, or sorry, anything like mine, there is just so much stimuli all the time. There are meetings and deadlines and just we're bombarded by information all the time. Uh, and this usually forces us into this multitasking, distracted, um, way of, of, of being and, and way of just handling our everyday lives. So it's, so it's about, this is about um, counteracting that habitual energy of, of distraction and multitasking and, and really cultivating the ability to 
attend to one person at a time with full presence, full awareness, do this thing and then letting it go and turning our attention to this thing instead of just, you know, being all over the place all of the time. So the, the practice that we'll be doing is the same in a way we'll we'll uh, we'll keep using the breath as an object of meditation and last time we we uh, observed the breath as a in the whole body so we didn't have a particular focus of attention but today we'll we'll narrow that fo focus from full body breathing uh, down to for example we can observe the breathing in in the belly region and just uh, notice the rising and falling of the abdomen as we breathe in and breathe out. And um, <clears throat> this has the uh, this has two benefits. First of all, we're narrowing our focus, so we're we're starting to cultivate this this um, aspect of stability. But we're also dropping our attention down, which helps. Uh, it helps relaxation. It also helps to uh, uh, to start let go of the the monkey mind, all the distractions that that are happening. So we simply we simply try to uh, remain in contact with the breath, the full in breath, the full out breath, uh, and just see if you can some, bring some curiosity to to this. Uh, it's like an exploration of what's what's actually going on. So you don't have to breathe in any particular way, just uh, notice what's actually happening. Um, and um, one thing we'll do in the beginning of the meditation is to use the in-breath. So when we breathe in, there is a natural um, uh, increase in, in clarity. So we can, we can use the in-breath to sharpen our focus, but then in the out breath, there's this natural sense of release and letting go. So we can use the out breath then to to relax and, and uh, just drop uh, further into the practice. And then at the end of the or maybe halfway through the uh, meditation, I will introduce counting. So counting is a very good way of um, um, supporting our ability to focus. So what what we'll do is that um, we'll breathe in, and then at the, when at the end of the out breath, when it's about to be, or sorry, at the end of the in breath, as it's about to become the out breath, then we count one, and then we breathe in, and we count two. Breathe out, breathe in, three, and then. We, we go up to 10. Um, and then uh, when we come to 10, you can just simply return back to one again and then uh, we keep going like that. And this is helpful because it, it tells us immediately if we lost our focus. So if we're no longer focused and we're thinking about something else, we're also no longer counting. So whenever that happens, just no, take note of that distraction, let it go, come back and start over from one again. So we do what we, uh, what I mentioned last time. We release the distraction, we relax, and then we return. So that's an easy way to remember. Uh, and also if you find yourself counting 21, 22, 23, that's you know, the autopilot taking control. So again, just let it go, come back, start from one again. Um, and interestingly, the, um, the counting, it is in itself a distraction. So we're, we're trying to focus on the breathing, but then we're, we're actually, in a way, we're distracting ourselves uh, with the counting. But especially especially in the beginning 
the counting is helpful because it it helps us to to cut some of the conceptual mind and and the mind wandering so we're being a bit sneaky and we're using the conceptual mind to to strengthen this ability of focusing but if you find if you find not or the the counting not to be helpful uh, you can just uh, ignore the instructions but it's it's good to give it a try in the beginning and, and see if if it can be helpful um, yes i think um, that's what i wanted to say about or the instructions i thought i would give um, prior to today's meditation and we'll be just like like last time we'll be doing this is a 24 minute session so not too short not too long and it's if you want to lie down that's a, it's a really good um, idea it, it will support relaxation um, if you if you want to um, sit up either cross-legged on the floor or in a chair uh, again just remember to have um, a straight back so we want a posture that really um, embodies alertness and wakefulness but at the same time we want to be relaxed we want to be at ease and then you can turn your attention uh, to your abdomen and see if you can notice the sensations of the breathing there in the movement of the abdomen rising when you breathe in and falling when you breathe out so you narrow your focus onto this area and you just try to remain a continuous flow of awareness so you follow the whole cycle of the breath Maybe just be curious about how it actually feels to breathe. And whenever you lose that continuity of awareness, whenever you become distracted, just gently release the distraction. Allow the mind to relax and return it back to the chosen object, the abdomen.
order to balance the effort, you can use the in-breath to arouse your focus, sharpen your focus, and then you use the out-breath to release and let go and relax. Breathing in, sharpen focus, and then breathing out, relaxing, releasing. And then as a support for our focus, our attention, we can introduce the counting. So you breathe in and then at the end of the in-breath, you count one. Breathe out. And then you breathe in and count two. And then you continue up till 10. And at 10, you start over again at one. And whenever you lose focus, whenever you lose the counting, you just start over again from one.
So whenever you become distracted, you lose this continuous flow of attention on the breathing. Just release the distraction. Gently bring your attention back and continue observing the breath. Continue counting the breath, starting over from one. Just noticing where's your attention in this moment. Noticing distractions and then very gently bringing the attention back over and over again.
Okay, so maybe just um, uh, a note on on the counting. So if you if you find um, that it is helpful, um, I think it's it's uh, good to to use it. But if it's not, you can just drop it because the main practice is is keeping our attention with the uh, focus and stability on the breathing and the counting is just the support for that but you can also but if you if you find the counting helpful there are some there are variations so in different ways of doing it so we counted at the end of the in breath you can also try counting at the end of the out breath there's a slightly different uh um, feel to that so you can you can play around with that and you can also um, you can also if you count up to 10 then you can go backwards down to one so you go nine eight seven that requires a little bit of so if 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 you're very agitated that requires a bit more mental effort so then that can also be a way of cutting some of the distractions and then it's very in many traditions instead of counting you will be using noting so you can just note in out in out for example or sometimes rising falling rising falling but all these are just supports for uh, for attention so you play around with it and if it's helpful um, use it and if it's um, not then then don't <laughs> Okay, and then I thought I would give you some homework again. I don't know if um, if you're up for it, but uh, till next week, next session, um, please uh, do. You can start doing this, and if you have if you have twenty minutes for meditation every day, that's uh, fantastic. But you know, if you can do ten minutes, it's almost equally fantastic. And if you can just get five minutes in, that's that's so much better than than nothing so to try to really find a time and make it a regular habit so you do it the same time every day in the morning or in the evening or whenever it's suitable but and then you do uh, and if you find that this is if there's some if there's too much tension now when you start to to focus then just go back to the full body breathing and the relaxation uh, use the lying down posture um, but um, if you find this one helpful, uh, please do this one for, for the next week. And then, like I said last week, also use this throughout the day. So whenever you feel that you're getting tense or agitated or stressed, uh, see if you can just drop one minute or even 30 seconds of, of this uh, exercise or this practice in there. That will definitely change the quality of, of your mental state in that situation and even set timers throughout the day so you can just do uh, just do one minute of, of mindfulness every hour that will still make a difference so there's this uh, there's this um, metaphor of um, uh, it also comes from Alan Wallace about he talks about seasoning the day so you know just like if you have a you have a big plate of food within that plate there will be just a tiny piece of seasoning to make it taste good so that the seasoning is is just a fraction of the amount of food but it's the same thing with with mindfulness if you can just drop uh so you like seasoning the day with mindfulness that will have a great effect on the entire day there's a lot of day and if you throw in a few spaces of mindfulness it will change the quality of that day so really try to find those the time for those mindful breaks and then again uh, like i mentioned last week when it's time to go to bed so, so the last thing you do at night you can lie down in in the shavasana posture the court posture so hands at your sides and palms facing upward and then you do this uh, this uh, exercise, this meditation, this focus shamatha meditation. 
So you follow your breathing, do what we did. But then as soon as you find that, okay, I'm, I'm starting to become drowsy, I'm, I'm moving more towards sleep, then you just uh, let it go and you, you can change your posture. So you, you, uh, um, you tell yourself that I'm now stopping the meditation and, and going to sleep. So you can turn over or just maybe just turn your hands, do something to signal that this is the end of meditation and the start of sleeping and then you just ride that uh, that wave into to sleep so it's actually a very good way also of, of letting go of, of anxious thoughts at the end of the day and um, moving into sleep transitioning into sleep and hopefully having a, a good night's sleep so that's that's again the homework 10-20 uh, minutes of meditation every day a little bit here and there uh, throughout the day and then rounding everything off with uh, a final session in the evening and uh, I will check very carefully next time if you all done your homework <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not we can send you an email every time we're done yes because like I need more emails <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but uh, if you if you have any questions, though, please do send me an email and ask or, you know, um, maybe I could send you emails throughout the day. It's like time for <laughs> mindfulness. <laughs> I have to automate that, set something up. OK, so that's uh, that's the end of the first session. So now we have some some Fika and then we come back and have a little bit of questions if there are reflections if there are any and then we sit for another session and yeah but now time for fika mm -hmm.